So welcome, this is the Leader Lab for the month of October. The theme is deep listening and welcome to those of you who are watching this online and welcome to our over 10 participants right now. It's a wonderful to have this great amount of people applying and I wanna just make sure I'm, somebody's not saying, I can't get on, there we go. So what I do in these leader labs for the second Wednesday of the month is go into my favorite parts of the packet. So you hear from my voice what I think stood out for me and what I did. Oh, thank you, Margie. Thank you. Um, oh, let's see. Um, there we go. And I do that overview and as usual, I say it's really hard to pick, but it's something um, that I can do. And then, I'm sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to do too many things. And then we go into a time of sharing where we go through the challenges and opportunities that you found about the packet this month. And then we go into the takeaways and solutions that we can offer each other. So it's a real nice time to do that. And uh, Margit, I thank you for your um, offer of being co-host. I'm just going to keep going, but thank you. And then I do need someone who would like to be a timekeeper so that we can time it. And it just means holding your smartphone up and putting a little timer on uh, for a minute and a half for each person's talking. Um, I'm going to turn on gallery view and see if anyone's raising their hand to be a timekeeper this time. Great, Sam is going to do that. Thank you. Okay, that's enough for the details. I think we're ready to go. So deep listening for October. I want to light the chalice first with a reading uh, by our Soul Matters team called The Echo of Inner Wisdom, and this is in the worship packet. We light this chalice to remember the light within, to know that the hunger we feel inside is not an emptiness, but the echo of an inner wisdom that already knows what we need. May our time together help us welcome that voice and each other back home. I'll light it and place it. on my little table. A couple of announcements, just like church. <laughs> Not too many. Uh, the brainstorming, the next meeting of these brainstorming labs will be the first Wednesday, October 7th. That, believe it or not, will be for the theme of January. <laughs> and then the um, Second Wednesday Leader Lab, which is the similar one to this that's recorded, will be Wednesday, October 14th. I hope you can join me then. And we'll talk about November's theme of healing. So Deep Listening has four Sundays in October. So we came up with four lenses. Listen to your heart. Listen to BIPOC voices listen to nature, and listen to the ancestors. So if the themes were a house, let me give you this metaphor, we would walk through a room of compassion on the Sunday that we talk about listen to your heart. We would walk through a room of humility, and I might be wrong as we visit the, listen to the voices of BIPOC people. We would walk into a room of connectedness as we listen to nature. And the last and final room is we would walk into a room of remembering when we listen to our elders, our ancestors. Those uh, walks through this house are really what we want to be teaching with our children. Imagine if we can say we're going to be teaching humility, compassion, 
connectedness and remembering as our curriculum for the month of October. It's just one way I think of writing these sessions, uh, these different rooms as I'm walking through a house. So in the room of listen to your heart, my favorite piece of that, besides all of it, I'm sorry, but I always do this, is the beginning of Leah Morris's um, Soul Matters Commissioned music and meditation piece. She's an award-winning songwriter and a singer. If you go on her websites, you can see the other things she's done. You'd see some of her concerts she's given. And she's agreed uh, when we asked her to write a mindfulness music piece for every theme from now until February. So October through February. Her way of writing these is incredible. As a songwriter, when I was back in August talking to her about our themes and what we did, what a DRE is, that kind of thing. She said, oh, well, how does this, does this sound? I've been thinking about this, knowing I was going to talk with you. And she shared several of the phrases already that she had come up with. I, I find it truly amazing to be able to work with a songwriter who just has these beautiful things in their head. So I commend those to you. And what she gives us is two videos. You get a secret code, a secret soul matters code, and you go into her website. It's in your packet. And the two videos are MP3s. There's a long and a short one. The long one is her talking with her two children who happen to be just the ages of these two packets, preschool and elementary school. Lucy is her four or five year old and Jacob I think is 10. And she talks for the month of October about um, listening. This, that's the song that she's made up. And little um, Lucy has some very appropriate four year old comments and Jacob has some very grown up, really neat reflections. And you can use either one of these. In addition, when you put your code in, you get the um, lyrics, you get the mp3, there is a YouTube video, but that isn't as high quality. So if you want the really good quality to play it, say for an intergen or something like that, get download that mp4 video. Uh, let's see the lyric sheets. And I tell you, when I talk to everyone, so we had the brainstorming meeting last Wednesday, I'm talking to my own family who are trying to figure out how to start school. I think listening is a very appropriate theme for the month of October. That sense of inner voice getting us through all these decisions. The people I'm talking to are coming up on what's called decision fatigue. And so we want to ease that and give them things that nourish their soul. Because when their soul is nourished, that helps them through this difficult time. If we just say, well, we're just going to have a whole lot of things to think about, that's not nourishing their soul. Let's all remember that these themes are the way that we are nourishing souls. So that was my favorite, the, the whole idea that we have Leah's songs to join, to uh, use. I put it at the beginning so that it's a time that you can introduce that to your families, but feel free to use it like every session in October for listening. The second lens or room of humility and maybe I'm wrong kind of room is our anti-racism room. It's the anti-racism lesson. And I wanted to lift up two things. One was a link to a chart that the uh, school library journal, um, journal of school librarians put together on how minorities and marginalized people have been portrayed in children's literature. I found that a very powerful chart and they've just recently updated it. It's 
maybe a year old now, but it's still powerful. And the link is in your packet. And it shows you, uh, you know, here's the little figure for how many people of this ethnic background. Here's the little figure for how many people of this ethnic background can be found in all the children's literature that they can review. And then here's, of course, the white Caucasian. It just outnumbers. And what that does is erase our people of color. And so that whole concept of being erased is what I'm uh, introducing to the children through you and what it must feel like to be erased. And then the other piece of that anti-racism session, that session number two, is the idea of powerful pauses. And it's got two parts to it. For white folks, the idea of a powerful pause is to pause in humility. A specific uh, example I give is the microaggressions. And what if someone of color says to you, that really hurt? What if someone says something to you at any point in your life that says what you're saying or doing really hurts? The idea of a powerful pause it's in the old days we said count to 10. But these are mindfulness and you may be already familiar with the tactile. You trace your finger and you take a breath. Take, trace your finger and take a breath. Trace your finger and take a breath. Trace your finger and take a breath. Take take a breath. That gives you the powerful pause that if you are a white person, it allows you to find your humility and set aside your defensiveness. And this is a skill for life that I would like all of our children to learn. If you are a person of color, what the powerful pause does, the same powerful pause, counting to 10, is give you a, a pause to allow you to say, is this worth it? Is this particular place and time worth confronting? Is this a safe time to confront? And that's the centering for the people of color in our congregations to use the powerful pause. All right. The third session, lesson, lens, whatever you want to call it, is nature. So I went on a cricket kick when I wrote this because listening to crickets at night evokes a very strong feeling of the deepness of the, the possibilities of listening. And sure enough, once I wrote this, every time I go for a walk now, I, list, I hear the crickets and the cicadas and all these things just making their beautiful sounds. And fortunately, you don't have to make a sound. You can use a comb. This is one of the suggested uh, reflection objects. It sounds like a cricket. And then there's a whole comb symphony. There's a, you can make a little kazoo with a comb that is uh, called cricketing. OK, so that was the part that I enjoyed about listening to nature. And the other thing is a sort of a science angle. Do you know that the, there's an organ that the crickets use to make that sound? It's a tegmen on their abdomen, which is like a washboard. And they have a scraper on their leg. So they scrape the tegmen and the scraper to make that sound, just like you run your fingernail down the comb. But in addition, they have what's called the harp. And that's when the cricket folds its wings to make a reverberation. And that reverberation is what expands <coughs> the sound. Um, so I think that's pretty miraculous. And when you become <coughs> mindful, it'd be great if you could mute yourself, please. Mindful of that sound, that's what we want our children to get. Uh, let's see, the fourth and last one. So many of our congregations do a 
Remembrance Ceremony in October. It links to our Day of the Dead stuff if you're in a Hispanic area like I am in Colorado, but if you're not, you don't want to culturally appropriate that. But if you call it a Day of Remembrance, then every single person in your congregation knows that when they pass on, they will be remembered. If you don't do one, when is the time that your congregation says to you, you are so precious to us and you will be remembered? It's a very powerful moment that I think every congregation needs. It's linked to the All Souls and All Saints Day in our Christian heritage. And it's a time when I've experienced this over and over through the years that, yes, people cry because there's been recent death, but also people cry because you never get over that grief, do you? It just integrates into your life. And what a wonderful place it is to tell our congregants that this is a place that we accept and acknowledge grief. And we acknowledge the memories that each person leaves us with. My dad, Del Tweedy, long time you, you, when we grew up, he always said to the people he talked to, he was usually standing at the welcome table. He said, you really don't know you, you, until you experience a you, you memorial service. Because it's not about our faith, is it? It's about that person and how we're gonna remember them. So this is a time to do a remembrance ritual. And it's suggested to do it as the small group time with the children so they can go and get their photograph or draw a picture of the person they're thinking of. And I always include beings because in children's lives, they might not have experienced a death, except they might have experienced the death of a pet. So people and beings. And then there's a book that I recommend called Granddad's Prayers of the Earth, that usually I have to warn people that you can't get through it and <laughs> without crying. It's a Douglas Wood book. And I hope that you can use that for this day of remembrance time. The book itself, if you have it in your ARI library, you can get it, is large format so that pictures translate well, but there's also a beautiful uh, video that you can show as well. Granddad's Prayers of the Earth for the Ancestors. Oh, just, just as a heads up, if you don't know the story. So I always use the video as the preview so you can quick get, get what the story is about. Uh, Granddad walks through the woods with his son. Um, they listen to the rocks. They listen to the trees. It's a really nice sort of the trees pray kind of deal. And then, hey, Jan, how about... Um, Muting sorry. Thank you. Yeah, I thought I was. Sorry. Yeah, it happens. I know. Uh, and then he, his grandfather dies. And he loses his connection with everything. He's going through all this awful stuff. And he um, reconnects with the idea of praying to the earth and finds that sense of completeness and connectedness again at the end of the book. So just a heads up and also a recommendation. So the other two things I wanted to lift up are the connecting with other families part of this. Um, personally, I, would, I want to be a fly in the wall if you do the dress up your pets for Halloween. The idea is deep listening while well, they might have ears, and so you could do something with ears. Of course, if you have a pet snake, then, well, that might not work so well. But dressing up pets, it sounds like a fun and frivolous and absolutely twisted way of connecting with your families. And sometimes we need that little lightheartedness. And then the second of those connect five connecting with families uh, categories I would also lift up this family nature club idea. I hadn't ever heard of it. And the video that describes it is really wonderful. It takes, looks like it's primarily in California, but I don't see anything wrong with taking the idea and saying, 
Let's make our own family nature club and go for a walk. These are things that nourish the souls of our families. I'm going to move into the little preschool through first grade packet. There's some of the, some of the overlap. But the two things that are especially different that I really enjoyed were the two books by my two favorite preschool authors. Arnold Lobel writes a little story called The Crickets in Mouse Tales, which is just perfect. And then there is The Very Quiet Cricket by Eric Carl. So, you know, he's the guy that wrote The Very Hungry Caterpillars, and now he's writing The Very Hun Quiet Cricket. And then I also, lastly, for the preschool through first grade packet, you know, I put in make a card or a drawing for someone you're thinking about, for your grandparents. That was the angle for the little guys, the preschoolers. And my little first grade granddaughter, every time I go see her, runs upstairs to her room, spends about 20 minutes, and comes back down with a picture for me. And I find that is, it's just the most delicious thing to get a picture. And she knows I'll hang it on my refrigerator. And even though making a card, mm, at first it's like, oh, that's just so, so mundane. The preciousness of what these children can do and how they want to express their love of their grandparents, if that's appropriate is what I wanted to capture for that part of the preschool packet. I thought of my little granddaughter, Lita. So let's check the time. Yep, perfect. I've spent enough time, about 25 minutes, talking about the overview. And now what I'd like to do, we have, um, let's see, 21 participants. So we're going to have about 30 seconds, Margaret, um, if you're going to be the timekeeper, about 30 seconds. Was it Margit that said she'd be the timekeeper? I that? think Sam, Sam. Sam said. That's right. Thank you, Sam. You both were on the brainstorming meeting. I just interposed that. Let me uh, change to gallery view. There we go. So what we do in this section is say, and you can always skip if you'd just like to lurk, that's fine too. But I'll call on the people in the order of my screen and share with us a challenge or an opportunity that you're experiencing for moving into October. If you're there yet, if you're not, you can say whatever challenge or <laughs> opportunity you happen to have in your life right now. Probably keep it to RE though. Uh, and then Sam's going to hold up her smartphone when your 30 sec seconds is done. And then Everyone will get a chance, and then we'll move into uh, takeaways and solutions as we have listened to everyone. So let's start, and first on my screen is Nan Gregory. Uh, good morning. I, I think I don't have very much to say right now, so I'm going to pass. Thanks. Okay, thank you. And next is Margit. Oh gosh, that's perfect because I just got a call from our communications director in adult education. She has a flat tire on uh, Route 95 and the tow guy can't change her tire. He's just towing, so I need to do a rescue mission. So um, something I heard today um, that was lovely and I'm, I want to explore this. Uh, it's going to take the whole community. It's creating multi-generation and this speaks to the, you know, connecting with elders people. Um, uh, creating multi-gen check-in pods. So um, two, two elders, two empty nesters, two families. Um, and they just, you know, they check in once a month, but then there's a whole lot of support that can flow either way. And I thought that was great. And I'm gonna have to watch the rest on the video because yes. I gotta go. Okay. Jump in my car. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You. Wishes, best yeah. wishes for flat tire. And next on my screen is, is Rose. Okay, hello. Um, 
Hi. Yeah, I haven't I haven't uh, really did, done a much of a deep dive into October yet because we are only just starting up this Sunday. So I'm kind of all in my startup mode. Um, I'll share that I had a very, uh, I'll share that working with the um, mission idea, I had a very fruitful meeting with our pastoral care committee last night. They're very enthusiastic about that project. So we're good to go there. Um, and the thing I think I'm looking for most is I am looking more for ideas about things to set physical items to send home that people can interact with. Um, yeah, and not on screen and not just coloring things. I mean, not just coloring things. So wonderful. Yeah, yeah. that's high on everyone's list. And next is Carol. Zimmerman. <laughs> Uh, like Rose, I haven't done a deep dive into uh, October yet, but um, I think I'm just, I'm appreciating because we're, pro we're not going to be starting programming for children and youth until October. Mm -hmm. So I think um, uh, uh, our ideas around deep listening are really strong. But other than that, I don't think I have anything that's really pressing at the moment. Lovely. Thank you, Carol. And next on my screen is Judy. Hi. Yeah, we've already we've we've started the September packet. I haven't looked at October, <laughs> but um, um, my challenge is to get children who um, who uh, stop their video to become engaged. And um, I'm looking for more games you can play online. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Judy. And next on my screen is Sam. And Sam, I'll do it for you. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. um, not too much to share at the moment. I, I'm swallowed by September <laughs> currently. Um, but I like what I hear for October. I'm very intrigued by the BIPOC discussions and the nature elements. So to be continued. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here. Thank you, Sam. And Christine, hi. Hi, um, kind of like Sam, I'm swallowed up by September right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do have an interesting idea that I'll share on the Facebook page for doing, um, if you usually do trunk or treat, we're going to do a door competition instead. Mm. Um, which I was thinking about the pets because we want to uh, do a drive through where you drop off socks for Socktober and then get a treat bag and take your picture and then create a virtual costume parade to share with the whole congregation. And now I'm like, we could add the pets. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Thank you, Christine. Next on my screen is Jan Price. Um, hi. Um, I think uh, my opportunity and, and challenge uh, are both regarding the same, same things. And that is uh, because we haven't started, well, I'm, I'm using Soul Matters a little bit in youth group right now, but we're not starting like Children's Chapel until after Water Communion. So the 20th will be our first Sunday morning Children's Chapel prior to our regular service. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, so the challenge is um, that, that um, you know, recruiting enough hopefully families, but other people to fill in as needed um, with myself. Um, but also the, the big opportunity I'm hoping is um, reconnecting with some of the families that we haven't seen. Great, thank you, thank you. Next on my screen is Carla Miller. Hi, um, so I also am not starting until September 20th. We have the water communion this coming weekend. And I think that looking to October, my challenge is keep us, keep the children with us <laughs> through those first two sessions so that we can really go a little deeper in October and, and hold them in a way that keeps them coming back. 
Mm -hmm. um, and the opportunity in that also is these, these ideas about family to family. And I'm excited about encouraging our families to find ways to connect. Um, the nature walk, I think, is lovely. And um, those kinds of things that they can do together that we can't do officially on our property um, probably throughout this year but I think they can make some safe decisions and have some fun. So, Wonderful. and the costume party just sounds great. Yeah, thank you. Next on my screen is Jenny Pat. So I think the, um, the opportunity has been that um, there, everyone seems to be very um, enthusiastically engaged at the moment. They want something, and I really appreciated um, your comment, Katie, about um, the holding the space for them. And I need to remember that opportunity that that's what our place is, and to be a support and to be a place of of comfort for them, um, because like many of you, I expect our our creators and fixers. So. <laughs> Very nice observation. Thank you, Jenny. Next on my screen is Shelby. Um, so like many of you, our church has not started yet. Um, October will be our first Soul Matters, so deep listening. Um, and then we have our in-gathering this weekend our next weekend it's coming up. Um, and so just hoping to glean from the knowledge learned here and shared here and go from there. So thank you for this. Thank you, Shelby. Next on my screen is Janet Murphy on the beach. Hi, that is my dog running on the beach, actually. <laughs> um, I um, ditto to everybody else who's doing water service this coming Sunday and then um, starting Soul Matters the coming Sunday after that. Um, and I'm new uh, DRE, so just sort of treading water, calling families, trying to see who's going to be on board and feeling a little frustrated that nobody answers emails ever. <laughs> That's all I have. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Karina. Hey, Katie. Hi, Sam. I just had to check in. I'm sorry I've been absent for so long. Um, I'm, we had a good summer curriculum that was activity oriented, packets going to the church, and it sounds like families want that for the month. So we're not going to do that every other week like we had over the summer. We're going to continue packets going home through the month and we will be using Soulful Home as our kind of um, base for that and interaction with the theme because since pandemic, I think our shift has been to family oriented um, religious education and centering the parents and guardians in that. And so my work is less with the children directly and more with parents. And so that's been a very interesting shift. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, and so I feel like the Soulful Home is a good grounding for that. Nice. But I love seeing you all and I'm, I, w I just had to say hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next on my list is Victoria. Hi. Hi. So we've been doing a, we're gonna, Period of transition. We have an acting RE director who is leaving us at the end of September. Um, I'm on the RE team and we're kind of putting together a scaled back program. We've just done one of the projects for September. We're going to do one meeting in September. We're probably going to do the same in October. We're going to pick one, one theme, one activity, and have one meeting. Um, and one of our challenges is keeping our uh, adolescent, our middle school or late elementary school age boys engaged. I'm finding that even like my eight year old son doesn't always respond well to some of these activities. Yeah. Uh, and trying to figure out how to, how to speak to them and get them to stay involved and stay with us. Yeah. Good. Good. I'm glad you're aware of that too. That's a good thing. 
Thanks. Next on my screen is Lee. Lay. Sorry. Yep, Lee. Lee. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Uh, one of our challenges is we have already a small congregation and a smaller children's group, and the Zoom environment has whittled that down to even a smaller number. So our challenge is to in, um, create lessons that are meaningful in a group format with only like two or three kids. <laughs> and if one or two doesn't show up, then it's a, like almost a private lesson, which <laughs> could be weird depending on the kid. They may not like all that attention. Um, we have other kids in our congregation, but uh, it, you know they've decided already not to be part of our church uh, Zoom format. They're just doing too much online with on screens with the kids anyway. So we actually just today delivered goodie crates to the all the families to their actual homes, like physical crates, to keep the ones engaged that um, aren't going to be coming, just to keep them in our circle and let them know we're thinking about them. And the other kids that are, will be there, we put arts and crafts things in there for the first few lessons. Um, but I'm very excited to be part of this group to learn ideas of how to engage, especially a small amount of people on Zoom. Yeah. Oh, and to that end, I am a puppeteer, so I just wanted to introduce my friend Newton here. Wonderful. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm actually the one that teaches all of the lessons. She just is taking all the credit, as always. But <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lee, that's wonderful. I love, I'm a puppeteer. There's Bear and Butterfly that I write for, and, and I bet you your little guy could do Bear and Butterfly. Oh yeah. There's um the one that the 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 puppet show I made up for deep listening is when you hold up an ear or no you hold up a heart and you say this is an ear. So check it out. I want, oh I, I have want, to look at that. Oh yeah, great. I want people to do that with puppets, but you can do it with yourself too. It's a good point. Yeah, we're gonna do it with puppets, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Lee, you gotta come and do puppet ministry with me. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. Great. Um, our time is double, double up and I want to respect everyone else. So here we go. Next on my screen is Heather. Um, we can't, there, I think that's Can you all hear me? Okay. So um, right now we are completely revamping our program. And so we are on hiatus until maybe October, but hopefully, you know, as soon as we decide what we're going to do. Um, our biggest, my biggest problem is coming up with things for the, um, we might do like a weekly or a uh, once a month thing where the uh, kids are by themselves and then a week where the parents are with the kids, so family RE, and just things for them to do together um, or things to put in a box for the monthly theme. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, we're combining Soul Matters and Soulful Home together. So trying to pull ideas from all of those. Great. And um, I was sharing with my team last night some ideas that I got from Soul Matters and I kept telling them where it was from and I was like, I should stop telling them. <laughs> no, I was kidding. <laughs> I was like, these are all brilliant ideas. <laughs> <I'm> like, <"Yeah." laughs> good. So kudos to you that these are all good ideas. My RE committee thought the same thing. Uh, all the ideas I got from the way old reach packets that used to come out from the UUA. And finally somebody got on there and they said, wait, Katie, we thought you were coming up with all these ideas. So it was, it was a very enlightening moment for her. I'm like, I'm just me, I need me. But that's a good segue into don't feel bad about that because Soul Matters is building blocks for you. So use them in any way you can. Rip them apart, use it up. Jenny, let's see, you win already. So people have been shifting around a little bit. Victoria went. How about Jen Hancock? I don't think you've had a chance yet. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, so I'm Jen Hancock. This is my first meeting. We, I am in North Carolina at a really small UU church and we are, our E-team is completely volunteer. So we're just trying to get new ideas. Um, and we're getting a lot of resistance to synchronous Zoom or online events with online school. So we're trying to find some things. So already lots of great ideas. So thank you all. Great. Thanks, Jen. And uh, I believe it's Paul next on my screen. Everybody's doing the, this wonderful Muppet uh, avatars. Thank you. I'm enjoying these. <laughs> oh, look. Uh, this is my new guy. 
Oh, hello. This is Kobe. <laughs> Hi there. Oh, I love him. Just love to get to go to social gatherings. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm a puppeteer too. Wonderful. Um, so I, I saw Leah and I have already connected and we're going to talk after the uh, thing here. Great. Leah. Leah. Um, so uh, um, I'm excited. We are, we're starting on the 13th with the water communion and um, we did the eight principles for the eight weeks in the summer and Soul Matters just started in September. I haven't seen October's thing yet. Is that being emailed or do we have to go get it? I mean, how's that work? It's in your archives, and so you have a personal password that get, is okay. given to you by Susan, and they're they're posted now. We post them about eight weeks in advance. Okay, so I need to figure out how to do that because uh, all I have is September's, which we're all excited about. Um, plenty of stuff in there to use, and um, we've. Uh, I'm looking forward to this Sunday is getting our, our kids back. And um, hopefully having you know a, a large participation. We've already done wonder. We did wonder bags, not boxes, and uh, we've got them going out. So um, we're excited. It's just uh, it's amazing. I love the the, the program. So Great. looking forward to looking into uh, October's. Great. Well, um, um, I'm gonna write puppet things now that I know there's at least three of us. Well, yeah, the bear and the um, and the butterfly. My wife and I rehearsed today. We're gonna record that. Um, I have a bear and butterfly puppets. Oh, and I got puppets coming out of my ears. So wonderful. Um, well, and you know, yeah. you don't have to be a puppeteer, everybody. You can have the speaker and the comb talking to each other. There's your right. Puppet. Any anything can be a puppet. <laughs> so don't feel Absolutely. like you have to be a puppeteer, but but please, because now I'm going to go into a little review. But has there been anyone that I've missed? I think everyone's Austin. Happy. Austin. Oh, Austin didn't go. Yeah. Where is Austin? Where is Austin? I don't see Austin. Is she still on? No, I think she dropped off. Okay. I did a teacher training with Austin. That was a lot of fun. I will hopefully get, get her back on. Uh, let's see. Puppet stuff. Um, I forget what I was talking about. I do this. Okay. So oh, you were saying don't have to be a puppeteer. Yeah, don't have to be a puppeteer. Oh, there's several ministers. So I taught a seminary class for ministers at the Ohio, uh, Methodist Ohio Seminary outside of Columbus, I believe it was. And I brought my full-size goose puppet named Guinevere. And at first the ministers were like, oh my gosh, what's this religious educator gonna do to us? What's, what's she gonna make us do? But by the end, I'll share this with you, the most serious, like Harvard educated minister among our group of about, there's probably 18 students there, came to me and said, I found my puppet. I went shopping and this moose jumped out at me and told me his name was Oscar. And I was like, yes, yes, because, oh yes, this is the, the purpose of all that. The, the puppet, can be the foil. So my Guinevere Goose looks around when she's in front of everybody and she says, this isn't a real church, Katie. This is, there's no picture of the great gander in the sky. So you're not a real church. And so the children then tell Guinevere why we are a real church. You see, so I'm not, it's not like you have to prove, like I say, oh, well, we're a real church. No, they're telling Guinevere. Or um, when we talk about death for the service of remembrance, I invite the children to be with me like for your small group time on Zoom. And you talk about death, you read a story, you, you say when you're going to go to the service of remembrance on Zoom and everyone's going to be sad because they're thinking about people they've lost. That way you can prepare them a little and you can ask them to find something they can use as a puppet and whisper in their ear, whisper in your ear what, what its name is. Now this comb is telling me that its name is Natalie. For some reason, this is a Natalie. Natalie, what do you think about death? You see, you can talk to the little puppet better than you can say, well, kids, what do you think about death? 
I mean, let's just drop that on you for the Zoom meeting, right? You're not going to be very successful. So, but the, the comb may say things, the puppet may say things, you know? So think of puppets as the foil for a difficult conversation. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is the next thing we're going to do, which is takeaways and solutions. So now that you've heard everyone talking, what's, what one little thing are you going to take away for 30 seconds to share with us? And I'm going to go backwards so that the folks who, <laughs> anyway, it's always, it's always seemed fair to me to go backwards. So first on my screen, for doing takeaways and solutions for 30 seconds, and thank you, Sam, if you don't mind doing this one more time, is Victoria. And let's see if Victoria is ready to, to uh, share a little bit. Sometimes people are like grabbing lunch and things. There she is. Yeah, I'm not sure that I have much to share, just yeah. Um, I've heard a lot about the sending out packages and boxes, and we sort of started doing that uh, this month we sent out rainbow fish scales for them to decorate a dish inspired by the store the rainbow fish mm -hmm. um, but i'm really looking for more on how to keep those packages tied to the theme and we're going to be using them um having them create the the artwork inspired by the rainbow fish and then post it on facebook to share it and then we'll be writing great tip topics which we'll be using in the family chat um so i'm looking really for more ideas on how to um keep everything tied together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah. Yep. Great. Thanks, Victoria. Um, next on my screen, we'll, well, let's see, everybody just shifted. So I'll just do Jen Hancock again. There we go. Oh, hey, everybody. Um, so I think one of the things that we are eager to try are some uh, of this idea of family focus and trying to do some maybe like a family doing the family nature walk and then have everybody do like a show and tell or especially with the preschool kids of maybe something they found on their walk that they might like to share so that might be a way to make some connections there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. great thank you um paul briggs um I'm excited about the Halloween uh, dressing up your pets. Um, I, I wrote it down and also the multi-generational check-in pods. We are starting a, um, a parent support group. Really wanted to go with pandemic parenting, but uh, we, <laughs> my youth program coordinator said that yeah, she wants to continue it throughout, you know, when, when we start going back to normal. So it's, it's reach and it's, uh, um, the parent, I don't know, it's an acronym and it's, you know, it's, it, it stands for the, you know, being supportive to the parents. I don't know exact words of, for it, but um, it's for the young parents and, and parents working with kids who are in virtual school and mm. they're trying this whole new concept now. And, um, and it can be somewhat overwhelming. So it's a support group and we're going to have um, pastoral care in there and the minister is going to touch base. So there's going to be a lot of support there. Uh, for them, we are starting that. Um, but I am excited about the dressing up your pet for Halloween. We always do a parade of the kids dressing up in their um, costumes, and um, for for Halloween. But I think we can maybe do something for Christmas, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and we too, so. the, the screen came up, so we're we're out of time, Paul. Okay, Thanks. sorry. Thank you. And Heather, you're next on my screen. Um, so I really liked the pet idea too, um, and then I saw the <laughs> comment about the um, the dressing up stuffies if you don't have pets, or they could do both or whatever you know they like. Uh, God knows my child has like hundreds of pet stuffies, so um, <laughs> I like I really like that idea and the um, the door decoration contest. So I think we can get people to decorate their screens behind them for Halloween kind of service close mm -hmm. to Halloween. That would be really fun. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Heather. Good idea. Lee.
Um, I, I do like that idea too, about the dressing up the pets. And actually we had been talking about um, further down the road in terms of the Christmas pageant and somehow trying to incorporate pets into that. Cause we're already thinking, how are we gonna make the Christmas pageant happen considering it's gonna be on Zoom? So I like that you're already thinking about pets. Um, and uh, the, I'm looking forward to looking at that link someone shared about games online. Things we can do just like that thing you did with your fingers and taking the breath. Things we can do like visually with them online and they don't need anything but just their body. Those kind of body games, I think would be good. Finger games, good thing to look into too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, perfect timing. Next on my screen is Jenny. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about Christmas. <laughs> Or the winter holidays, and um, and and really thinking about um, trying to throw every time I think about how can we do what we used to do. I've been really inspired by throwing that away. I like feel like I'm doing a visual of I'm erasing that in my head, right? And um, so some of these ideas, thinking about Halloween, but um, I don't know, was that today or I've been thinking about the idea of. Um, the some good news thing. I don't know when we talked about that. Some yeah, good news yeah, sometimes. for the holiday, doing that a version of some good news for the holiday thing. And that and was SGN with John Kaczynski. It's on a YouTube thing. You could even post a link in the chat, Jenny, if people aren't familiar with it. I just love that. Thank you, Jenny. Carla. Um, yeah, I just heard so many good ideas here today. So thank you all. And one thing that struck me that hasn't been mentioned, I think, was the day of remembrance. And um, Katie, thinking a little more about that started to spark ideas for how that might become a part of our, our theme of October, listening to our ancestors and um, thinking about them making a little altar at home with pictures of a few generations of ancestors and um, calling grandparents to hear a story about them when they were a child, just making those connections across generations since we're emphasizing family. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And just as a little add, that's what's in the Chalice Home packet for, for October too. Thank you. Uh, Judy is next on my screen. Um, I liked the door competition and the virtual costume parade. Mm -hmm. um, and also thanks for the game uh, Jack Fox uh, link. Great, thank you. And Sam, I'll do yours. Thanks, Katie. Um, I'm, I'm intrigued by the use of stuffies. I know that there's the idea of the slumber party out right now and, you know, dress them up for Halloween. And I'm sure there's something you could do with Thanksgiving and might be interesting to integrate them into the Christmas pageants. <laughs> I'm feeling a theme with stuffies and living vicariously through our, our sweet little animals, whether they be real or imagined while we get through this. I'm intrigued. I know, isn't that, isn't that great? Stuffies. So like our avatars, isn't it? All right, next on my screen is Christine. Oh, I jumped over. Um, I'm thinking of puppets in a new way, so thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Next on my screen is Shelby. So in the coming weeks, we are actually hosting a stuffed animal sleepover and the puppeteering idea just started just blossoming ideas for that um, and you know, how to incorporate puppeteering in the stuffed animal sleepover, but also um, a possibility of parents being puppeteers. So uh, providing, we're going to be starting a parent group and maybe um, encouraging parents to, with some, with some techniques maybe even shared of how they could be puppeteers themselves to help talk about things, especially remembrance. So thank you for all of us. Great, great. And puppets whisper their names in the children's ears. And if you can't hear it, you just have to deeply listen. There's a little, little piece of that that you can use. Next on my screen is Karina. 
I love the tip about the puppet names. I'm going to remember that. I have made one foray into puppet tree with Wonderbox for the service and um, using your green screen on your Zoom background. If you record yourself in Zoom for a recorded service or if you do a Zoom service live, you can use a backdrop. And I used my chair and so I use the same color on my chair as the backdrop and then I could be behind there and do the puppets. <laughs> and yeah. I also and I also had um, outtakes afterwards. I had a blooper reel after that because <laughs> every bit it was yes. ridiculous. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I'm ever doing this again. Oh, it can be excruciatingly embarrassing. Yes, yes. Oh, I love that. <laughs> okay, next on my screen is Jenny. Jenny Pat. No, you win already. That's right, Jan Price. Um, I, I wrote down many ideas, so thank you. But um, we are in the midst on our small youth programs committee in uh, planning a, uh, we're trying to do the monthly family connects and we did one with three families attending the end of September. Um, mm -hmm. But we're gonna try with uh, something for October, mid-October. Uh, we usually go to an orchard, but in lieu of that, we're going to um, have anyone who wants to come in costumes. And um, I like the idea of also having pets come mm -hmm. and you can make it multi-generational. Mm -hmm. Great, Jen. And let's see, Christine. You, yeah, okay, uh, Carol. I'm just going to say thank you for everything. My brain is incredibly full. And I think I just, I appreciated your beginning metaphor, Katie, or, um, about the doors of um, each one of these things for you. Just I don't know, that just really resonated. The house metaphor. The Good. house, yeah. Good. Thank you. Rose is next on my screen. Sure. So um, I'm, I'm, also going to keep thinking on the stuffy theme because um, one, of my, one of the things I'm leaning into right now is the idea of encouraging a kid to um, have a stuffy companion that also gets a character, a name, and a voice that they can share. So in other words, I'm not interested in always doing things at kids, but having them come back. And I'll say one more thing on that in particular, I'm imagining uh, inviting middle school and up to consider doing that and being uh, guests, uh, readers, if you will, of books, et cetera, to kids by themselves or with their stuffy. Nice, so. nice. Next on my screen and last, I believe, is Nan. Yeah, I'd like to thank you so much for all these wonderful ideas. Um, and I'm very inspired by many of them and puppets particularly um, and involving the kids in, in having their own. Um, so I guess I would say that's a my main takeaway. Thank you, Nan. And thank you all. I just want to mention that we have a crowdsource document about boxes and care kits going on Facebook. There's a link there. And, and I put all the ideas I can find and people have been adding things for what they're adding to boxes. So if you're not a member of that Facebook page for Soul Matters, uh, get on it and you can get at that crowdsource. Um, let's see. Also wanted to mention as you move into October, don't forget about the lead with strategies. So when it, it's not always you, it's the Mr. Rogers strategy. He, it wasn't always his face. It was uh, the postman or the king, the little puppet king, or the TV screen that he had off and to the side so that your face isn't just the only face. And instead, if you can find someone, for instance, my classic example for September was find a chemist who can talk about such and such with you. For the, um, for the BIPOC anti-racism session in October, you may find someone in your uh, congregation who is already a teacher or a librarian and has thought about integrating uh, stories with characters, authors, and narrators into the uh, BIPOC people. 
into their collection. So expand it and think of the, about your whole congregation as the pool of lead with people. And I always have a lead with strategy uh, for these um, suggestions that I've given you. So, so that they don't get, like by the end of October, they don't get Katie fatigue, <laughs> that I'm not the only one leading everything. So it's 12 o'clock my time and whatever time it is your time, time to move on into the world of do and say. And here's our prayer for the listeners. When my ears are full of the worries, the concerns, the pains of others, grant me permission for silence. When my arms and shoulders and back ache from the burdens of others, Grant me permission to set them down. Guide me to another, a friend perhaps, to talk with, not for once to be talked at. And may I not be a burden to them as I pour out my pain and my weariness, my exhaustion, but a place, a space of mutual care. My listener friend, may you always know, no matter how tired I am, you can turn to me too. That's by Reverend Joe M. Cherry. And it's also in our worship packet for October. So blessed be everyone. I'm glad to, I'm gonna stop the recording now and I will, um,